back everyone. Today we have Agnes Baudry talking about the RO pi graded cohomology of BC201. All right. Um, thanks everybody for who invited me uh, and for the ACHD seminar. Um, so uh, yeah, so today I want to talk to you about the, I just call it RO pi. Um, there's, you'll see later, but this, this is a, a cohomology theory that was developed first by Constantable and Wainer, who are, are here today. Um, and uh, that sort of grades uh, echoing cohomology on something bigger than ROG. And this allows for studying uh, dual, like Poincaré duality, Tom isomorphisms, and all kinds of great things that don't happen in the ROG grading. Okay, so um, before I start, I wanna just mention my collaborators. So my collaborators are Chloe Lewis, Clover May. Note that these are different Lewis May. Um, <laughs> and uh, Sabrina Polly and Elizabeth Tatum. Um, this is part, this project is part of uh, the Women in Topology um, program. Um, and I also wanna make an acknowledgement to, uh, so say thank you to Prasit and Foling. Um, who have been uh, very generous in talking to me about all these ideas and uh, and and have been super helpful. Okay, so first I want to start with the motivation. Um, so I don't know if this is not one of your favorite theorems in algebraic topology, then 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 well we can have that discussion later. Uh, but it definitely is one of mine. So. First, it's the Tom isomorphism. So suppose you have a bund vector bundle C over a space B, then there's an isomorphism uh, like so. So here N is the dimension of C um, and it's obtained by cupping with a Tom class. Okay. And now here, of course, I mean Z two coefficients. If you get more creative your co with your coefficients, like if you have Z coefficients, you might not have a Tom isomorphism, but with Z two coefficients, you always get more. Okay, so now a great sadness in the world is that this generally fails in ROG graded cohomology. So for today, I'm gonna mostly focus on ROC2 graded cohomology. Um, there is uh, not in general a Tom isomorphism between the cohomology of the base space and the cohomology of the Tom space. Um, and here I'm gonna be, whenever I'm talking about CU cohomology um, and I have two stars here, I'm gonna mean with constant Z mod two Mackey functor coefficients, okay? So um, you can uh, tell this story with more fancy coefficients, but I'm just gonna stick with Z mod two. Okay, so now let's look at, so if there's no, if this generally fails, like sometimes you have one, sometimes you don't, but let's look at a counter example. Okay, so let me just show the slide. I'm gonna go through it, okay? So if I take, okay, so the space S11, um, so are people, so just to just to remind people, like when I'm talking about ROC2 graded cohomology, if I write RPQ, this is a C2 rep, okay? And it means P minus Q copies of a trivial representation plus Q copies of a sign representation, okay? So this is the motivic grading. Okay, so now, and S, SPQ is always the one point compactification of RPQ as a C2 space. All right, so I start with S11, and I want to think of it as the projective space in R21. Okay, R21 is the regular representation. So this is a copy of R2 where the C2 action just reflects across one of the axes. Okay, and I want to think of lines in here. Okay, so now you can check that this is the same as S11. Okay, so now here here's a copy. Here's a picture of S11. So I think of these two, the blue and the red point. If you can see those colors, as being flip, uh, as being fixed, and then C2 action flips the two arcs. Okay, and if you look at the tautological line bundle over this, you can think of it like like you usually do, like the way you usually think about the tautological line bundle by looking at the unit circle in R2 and identifying lines with pairs of points on it. Well, what you'll find out is over one of the fixed points, the fiber of the bundle is R10. So this is a trivial one-dimensional representation of C2. However, the fiber over one of the other fixed points is gonna be a trivial sign, uh, sorry, a one-dimensional sign representation. 
Okay, so over these two fibers, I have different representation, and this is important for the failure of the tau isomorphism. And the bundle you get is like a C2 version of the of the Mobius bundle. So like this, this the points over here get flipped to the points over here, and so not like the other fibers are just copies of C2 cross R. Okay. Now I think you'll agree with me that this is one of the easiest example of a C2 bundle I could have written. Okay, except for like the trivial one line bundles. That might have been, this is like the next easiest thing I could write. And already the theory kind of fails here. It doesn't give us a Tom isomorphism. So let's look at that, okay? So you can compute the Tom space. The Tom space is a projective space as well. Um, and it's a projective space on R3 one. So this is R3 where one of the plate is getting rotated and the other axis is fixed, okay? So, oh, sorry, not, sorry, it's the other. One of the plane, the way I wrote it, one of the plane is fixed and the other axis gets flipped, okay? All right, so now the projective space on this looks like, okay, so look, underlying this is RP2. So I have a disk with identifications on the boundaries, okay? The boundary circle is all fixed by the C2 action. So is the center. And what the C2 action does is it rotates the disk by 180 degrees, okay? And because this point is equal to that point, the boundary is fixed. Okay. So this is the projective, this is the Tom space for this bundle. Okay, so this is, this is T of gamma. Okay, so now if I look at the cohomology, so I'll, uh, so here I'm doing ROCD graded cohomology. I'll remind you that M2 is the cohomology of a point. Okay, and what does it look? It looks like a double cone like this. Okay, so the cohomology of S11, well, that's, I'm not doing reduce here, so I get two copies, but I get one in degree zero, which is if I reduce, I would lose that one, and then one in degree one, one, okay, which comes from the fact that it's S11, okay? So this is the P axis and the Q axis. Now, you can compute the cohomology of this space as well, okay? And what you'll find out is you also get something that's free of rank two over M2. And now I'm doing reduced. I forgot to write it. So I lose my, 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 my silly copy of M2 in degree zero. But then I have, again, I have an M2 that's in degree one, one, and one that's in degree two, one. Okay. And the ring structure is written over here. And these things are not isomorphic up to a shift. Okay. So if you think about it, if you had a Tom class, it would have to be X. Okay. But then, you know, as I multiply, it, so what you'll find out is um, that if you if you treat X as the Tom class, this class Y here is not going to be in the image of multiplication by X, okay? And uh, so really what's happening is that you have this relation and then you have this tau Y over here and, uh, and it's sort of in the wrong, this M2 sum N here is in the wrong weight, has the wrong weight, okay? It's too low. Okay, so it's a little bit easier to sort of explain this rigorously with a different example. So this is gonna be my main example that I'm gonna carry through for the rest of the talk. So, and I'm gonna call it P, okay? So this is the projective space. Instead of just one copy of the regular representation, I'm gonna take an infinite copy of this. So this is like a complete universe for C2, okay? And I'm gonna take lines in that space. I like to think of it as PR to infinity infinity, if you like the way the, the Medivic grading. Okay, and then, okay, so this space is cool because it's a BC201. So this is a classifying space for C2 line bundles, real C2 line bundles. Um, okay, so now again, it's a projective space. So it has a tautological line bundle, which is also a C2 line bundle, okay? And I don't know if you remember the classical space fact that if you take RP infinity and you take its tautological line bundle, if you take the Tom space, what you get is equivalent to RP infinity. It's homeomorphic, uh, sorry, weakly equivalent. No, homotopy equivalent. That's the word I want. So this proof actually kind of generalizes the, the, you know, whatever your favorite proof is, it's probably like that you take the section and then you compose with the quotient ma map and then that's a weak equivalence. That proof actually works C2 equivalently as well. And you get that the Tom space of gamma of, of, of gamma is P, okay? Okay, so great. So now we're looking for an isomorphism between the cohomology of the base space, which is P, and I keep forgetting my reduce, and the reduced cohomology of the Tom space, which is, again, the cohomology of P, okay? 
And if you have a Tom class, you convince yourself very quickly that it has to be X. And now, now the site that I made that multiplication by X is not subjective is actually rigorous and shows you, okay, you lose, you don't have the Tom complex. Okay. Because X squared here, where is it? I'm going to go back to my picture. This is not quite the right cohomology because the cohomology keeps going instead of stopping. But X squared, X squared is over here. And it's actually the, the sum of these two things. Okay. All right. So this has the wrong weight. Okay. Okay. So now let's me let's make a definition. So before we jump into looking at this bundle that is kind of not, does not have a Tom isomorphism in REOC2 graded cohomology, let's look at situations where you do have one. Okay. So a C2 bundle C is called homogeneous. This is a word I borrowed from Badal Sue, but it also shows up in the work of Constant Noble May Wainer. The same concept shows up in, in the work, in their work. Um, so now it's going to be homogeneous if there's a representation, RPQ, such that for every B in the fixed point set of the base space, the fibers are isomorphic to RPQ. Okay. So this is sometimes called representation constant. I don't know. I've, I've heard different words for it, but it's just like your fibers don't change. Like the representations don't change over the fixed points. Okay. Let me remind you that if I'm over the fi a fixed point and I have a G bundle, my fiber gets a G action and it becomes a, a G wrap, right? Okay. So that makes sense. If I'm not over the fixed point, that's not really a concern because my fibers look like kind of more like orbity. Okay. For C2, there's really nothing to look at those other fibers. And now I'll say the dimension of C is going to be, I'll call it the absolute value, and I'll just call it PQ. Okay. So now let's remark our bundle gamma from above is not homogeneous. That's what I explained. Okay. You have two different fibers. Now, okay. So I found this theorem in Hazel. Um, I, so I, I have a suspicion that like, you could probably also deduce the same thing from the work of Constantinople Constant Wainer and Constantinople May Wainer on the Tom isomorphism, but she, she states it explicitly, this first part. If C is homogeneous, then there is a Tom isomorphism in ROG graded cohomology. Okay. Um, and it's given, so you have a Tom class, and it's the Tom class has the degree that you think. It has the degree, the dimension of it. Okay. But however, um, Hazel's work says more than this. Okay. So she tells us that for any C, if the fibers over BC2 are, say, these representation, okay, I'm going to assume I have a finite number of components in the fixed points, okay? So we're just going to make things simple, okay? And now suppose that Q is the minimum of these weights that I have, so these are called the weights, then uh, there's a class in this cohomology that has the following property. So if I look at Cupping with that class, I'm going to get an isomorphism in a range. So I'm going to get an isomorphism as long as n is greater or equal to m. Okay. So if I go back to the example with the x's, so I'm going to I'm going to go over this red comment in a minute, but I'm going to scroll back up for a second to go back to the picture with uh, the picture that we had. Okay. So here, cupping with x, so x is Christie's Tom class. Cupping with x, so the map from here that comes from cupping with X is not an isomorphism, but it's an isomorphism above this line. Okay, and this is Christie's theorem. Okay. And okay, so if you read her work, there's even more. So the number of free M2 sum ends is going to be equal to the number of free M2 sum ends on both sides. Okay, and the problem is that these sum ends may place themselves at different places in terms of weight. Okay. So there could be that, it could be that you have a free sum end here that maps to a free sum end there, but the generator has a weight drop, okay? So the generator is lower in weight. Okay, so let's see. Um, I don't wanna make this too small. Okay. Oh, I didn't, I forgot I had this picture here. Okay, so this is exactly what I was explaining before. So if you take the this bundle, the Tom class that Christy talks about is this element, okay? Um, and if you look at, you cup with it, then you'll have x squared is in has has weight way too high to be no not weight has way too too big to be the generator. So you see this weight drop, and one of the goals that we had starting this project was to explain and predict like these drops. Like, can we say where where they're gonna go? 
Okay. And um, so this is at this point that we started sort of diving into the work of Constantinople Weiner on um, Thomas morphisms, because we like sort of already, you kind of see, okay, X squared is up there. It's almost like if you had a Tom, so 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 the idea for the Constantinople Weiner work is that you have a Tom isomorphism in a bigger grading. So you kind of can imagine already that there's like another dimension here. And that like somehow when you brought the element back here, you kind of went up because you you kind of picked up some kind of divisibility or something like that. Okay. And that's what we're gonna be seeing. Okay. So now let me look at the theorem. Okay, so um, so this is in a paper uh, from 1992, and it says that there is an R O pi graded cohomology theory. So R O pi B graded cohomology theory extending the R O G grading such that for any G bundle C over B, there's a Tom class in degree sort of the degree is now in this weird grading such that you get an isomorphism like this. So you get a Tom isomorphism. Okay, so now what is this? I'm gonna tell you what the ROB grading is uh, later in a second. Um, that'll be my next goal. I'm gonna ask you to take on faith that there exists a cohomology theory that extends that grading. Okay, so I'm not gonna explain how that's constructed. Um, and then we're also gonna sort of take on faith that there's a Tom isomorphism. So without explaining how it goes, uh, and, then, uh, and, then, and then we'll get some conclusions from that. Okay, so that's my plan. Okay, great. But you know, this, this, if you're willing to work in this extended grading, um, it's, you get your Tom isomorphism, you tell me your class, and you get even more. Okay. Okay, so now before my next goal is to explain what this R O pi B means. So first to explain that I need to explain what the fundamental groupoid is. Okay. So there's a notion called the equivalent fundamental groupoid. And so first, let's look at the case where G is the trivial group, okay? So this is a good definition. It reduces to the fundamental groupoid in the trivial group case, okay? So classically, the fundamental groupoid has object points in B, which I'm gonna write as maps from a point to B. And morphisms are homotopy classes of maps from the point to B because those are exactly what the paths are, okay? So now more generally, we just copy the definition. So often it's written as pi sub G B, but I'm gonna delete that. So if I tell you B is a G space, you know you're supposed to be working in the equivalent category. So I'm gonna make that assumption. So I'm just gonna call it pi B, okay? So the objects, well, their point, they're supposed to be points of B, but now we're working equivalently. So if you've worked with equivalent theory, you know the points aren't just points, right? They're orbits, okay? So now um, you, uh, so you look at, maps from orbits to B. And now what are the morphisms? So suppose I have two of these. Well, I'd like to have a homotopy between them, just like I had a homotopy there. However, I need to also tell you how to map between the orbits because they could be different, okay? So then, so the, so the morphisms are little diagrams like this, okay? Now, there's all kinds of adjunctions. Um, so mapping an orbit into, B, it's the same as choosing where the H coset goes, which is the same as picking a fixed point, okay? So you can think of this as the objects as being uh, fixed points and the morphisms as being uh, paths like this, okay? Where here you use the map in the orbit category to, you translate the map in the orbit category to a map between the fixed points for the different orbit types. Okay. So now this lives over the orbit category, which is OG. So the orbit category has objects, uh, orbits, so cosets of the form G mod H, and the morphisms are G maps, okay? And so there's a functor from the fundamental groupoid to the orbit category, which sends these objects to the corresponding orbits and the morphisms to this map T that you had over here, okay? And now the, the equivalent fundamental groupoid is not a groupoid, okay, in general, but it is a category fibrating groupoid, okay? So if you look at the pre-image in the orbit category, you have the, you can fix an orbit and you can look at the, only the identity morphism that gives you a little subcategory. And if you look at the pre-image of this, you get the fundamental groupoid of the fixed point space in the classical sense. 
Okay, so now let's look at the case when G is equal to C2. Okay. So when G is equal to C2, you can kind of like reduce the information uh, quite nicely because the ordered category is so small. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to think of it in terms of this, I, I like to think of it in terms of this middle diagram. It's good to go between both to not get too confused, but um, so for now, think of it this way. So now the orbit category looks like, well, there's two cosets. There's C2 mod C2 and C2 mod E. There's one map here and one map here. And uh, I'm omitting identity maps as we usually do. Okay. Um, so the map here switches the two points. It's just the multiplication by the generator of C2. Okay, so a point at this level corresponds to just any point of B because you have, so this is the underlying space. Okay. And a point at this level corresponds to a fixed point for the C2 action. Okay, and then we have some maps. I, I drew, drew them as bold. Like there can be many maps here, many maps here, and many maps here. But it's useful to think of it in terms of a skeleton. Okay. So first, take the underlying space. Of course, it could split into different components, right? If that's the case, like you can treat each component separately. So let's just assume the underlying space is connected. Okay, so we're going to take a path connected underlying space, and now we can pick a point in the on the underlying space. So that's a pair. I don't know why I put the brackets. So that's a pair of a point B together with its translate T of B. Okay, and now for each component of the fixed points. Now, even if the underlying space is path connected, doesn't mean the fixed points are, okay? So that's why I wrote, I wrote a little I here. But for each path component of the fixed point space, you're gonna have a little diagram, okay? So you pick a point there. And then the morphisms over here, well, they're gonna be, path, they're gonna be homotopy classes of paths in the fixed points from BI to BI. So I like to write this as the maps in the fundamental groupoid of the fixed points from BI to BI, because that's then allows me to like write everything in terms of the fun, in, like in a similar way, okay? But really what do I have here? I have the fundamental group of BC2 at the point BI, okay? So, and now maps here are the same as maps in the fundamental groupoid from B to BI, in, but now in the underlying space, and similarly for here, here I'm going to see the fundamental group of the underlying space based in B, but I'm also going to see pads, homotopy classes of pads from B to T of B, where T of B is like where B went under the action. Okay. So that's like how you write the skeleton and then you can think of it and you can solve what's going on here. Okay, um, okay. so let's look at an example. Now I'm going to go back to our P. Okay, and I'm gonna think about this one on the groupoid. Okay, so first, okay, so here I drew P, uh, I, I drew this little bit of P. So this is the projective space on three copies of the trivial representation and one copies of the sign representation. This is a subspace of P. So I can like glean information about the fundamental groupoid of P from this subspace, okay? So that's like, you have to think there's some more going on, but this is sort of, you can see some of it in three, in two dimensions over here, okay? So now I have, okay, so what are the fixed points? Well, the fixed points of the space P, so P remember is uh, the projective space in infinitely many, I'm gonna write it a little bit different. So I'm gonna write it as this. So these are trivial representation and these are sign representations. It's the projective space in here. So in here, I have, I can include the projective space on a bunch of trivial reps, and I can include the projective space on, on the sign reps, okay? And it turns out both of these are fixed, because if I have a line that's completely contained in the sign wrap, then if I act by C2, I just take minus of it, right? And that just preserves the line, even though it changes the points on it, okay? So this is like, P0, I'm gonna call this P1. So, and the fixed points of P is equal to P0 disjoint unit P1, okay? Okay, so I can pick a point B0 in P0 and a point B1 in P1, okay? So, and these are like a representative of the object in the fundamental groupoid of P0 and P1, okay? so. 
And then I can also pick a point B. So I'm gonna, so in my picture here, P0, I've, you know, driven, I've drawn the stuff that comes from the fixed points in blue, from the P0 fixed points and the other one in red, okay? So in my picture here, um, I've picked B to be a point that is not fixed. So it's in the interior of this disk that is getting rotated, okay? So then, okay, so then I have to write down the skeleton for this, uh, for this, for the category in terms of pads that I'm seeing in here, except there's one of them that I'm not going to be seeing in this, okay? But like, if I think about what's going on, well, I have one, so this is, I have a, so, so the underlying plate space is RP2, so its fundamental group is Zima2, okay? And I can pick a path. Uh, that represents the non-trivial loop. So this is like this orange loop that goes over here. Okay. Um, but also I have to look at maps in the fundamental groupoids over here. I have maps in the fundamental groupoid from B to T of B. So that's like this, that's like paths from B to T of B. Well, these are generated by this, this little path T that I've labeled T. Okay. And now similarly, I pick a path from B to B1, some P from, from B to B0. And, and here, um, if I look at uh, P0, well, this is RP infinity again. So that has a Z mod two fundamental group. So I, there's a generator for its non-trivial loop. And this is this arc G0. All right. So now P1 also has a loop, but it's coming out of the picture. Okay, it's not drawn. It doesn't appear, that loop does not appear in this projective space. To see it, you need to instead study P of R32, which is also in P, okay? But okay, so now you get a little skeleton for this category. Now, the thing that's really nice with this is that every single arrow here means like, so, so for each arrow, there's like two morphisms, okay? So here there's like the non-trivial element in Z mod two and the identity. Okay, here there's the non-trivial and the identity. There's two maps here, there's P1, but there's also P1 uh, followed by G1 and similarly over here, okay? So really like here you've got, you've got a Z mod two's worth here, Z mod two, Z mod two, Z mod two, and then Z mod two's and Z mod two, okay? And this group actually, the automorphism of this object is actually a product, okay? And it lives over the only category. Okay, so that's your fundamental group void. Um, but of course, relation, and I've written down the relations there. Um, so don't worry about them. I've read, written them for good measure, but how do you figure out these relations? Well, you just like use your like basic, you know, first time you learn about the fundamental group skills to figure out like who's homotopic to what in this picture. And then, you know, for the G ones, you have to draw this picture, but this is like really fun, but it's very not hard, okay? Just confusing at first when you're trying to figure out what the definitions mean. Okay, so that's your fundamental group void. And look, it keeps track of you know the pads and like and all of the components and whatnot and all the ways that you can move. So it's like it's 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 sort of built up to just like tell you like what do you need to keep track of to know about your fibers, like what representation you have and your whole little meat. Okay. So to do that, you need to talk about representations of the fundamental group void. Okay, so now I'm going to write the OG to be the following category. So the objects are going to be virtual orthogonal bundles over orbits, like so. Okay. So it's just you have orbits and then you just look at G bundles over them. And the morphisms are going to be homotopy classes of bundle maps. So suppose that I have a G bundle and I've, suppose I have two G bundles and I have like that, a map like this, I'm going to look for homotopy classes of maps uh, above here. Okay. So um, my, uh, so I, I don't want, I don't want to change the, the, the base map here when I'm doing those homotopies. Okay. So if I were to look at G is, if I look, were to look at just the trivial group, right, then VOG would just be isomorphic to, would have objects isomorphic to, the object would just be Z, right, for the dimension of the bundle, okay? And the morphisms would just be plus or minus one. Because although like bundle maps can be more interesting, like, so even over a point, right, you could have a not, you could have a fun matrix between R into Rn, right? But up to homotopy, 
that's just the components of ON, right? And that's plus or minus one, okay? So VOG for G, the point just looks like uh, R, it just looks, yeah, it, well, whatever. It looks like what I just described. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say more. Okay, so now what's a virtual representation of the fundamental groupoid? Um, it's gonna be a functor from the fundamental groupoid to this category, but it's gonna be a functor over the orbit category, okay? So as you can see, this also has a functor to the orbit category, right? I can just forget the bundle, okay? And I, I can forget the, the, the bundle map and just remember T for my morphisms. Okay. So a virtual representation is gonna be a diagram like this, okay? And the isomorphism classes uh, are gonna be denoted by RO pi GP. I forgot to get my, I, I like to, I decided halfway that I'm not gonna put the Gs in. Okay. Okay, so now let's do an example. So I'm back to our, our space P. I've copied the skeleton of pi B over here, pi P over here. And now, okay, so you have to, you have to, you have to do some work to deduce this, but I'm gonna just describe to you the answer, okay? So if I want a representation of this category, and then I have all the relations that I haven't copied here, Okay, then, well, okay, so first I need to, to pick a bundle over this orbit, which is C2. And any of these, well, they'll look, they'll look like C2 cross, R, cross RP. Okay, for some P, if it's virtual, P could be negative. Okay, but that's what they look like up to isomorphism. But now, because you have these pads here, that means that like the space, as long as you're like, as, you know, as long as you, you have a path between two points in the underlying space, well, then that tells you that the dimension of the fibers has to be equal, okay? So then you're gonna have that, the representation you put on B0 that you assign to B0 and B1 are gonna have to have the same dimension P, okay? And so that's your first integer in this, uh, in this grading. Okay, but now over the fibers, you can give them different weights, which I've called Q0 and Q1. But now that tells you what to do on the objects, but then you have to figure out what's happening on the morphisms, okay? And now the, homo hom the, the homomorphism, you have to think of them as holonomy, okay? That's how I think of them. Like you go over a loop, if you had a bundle, you'd pick up some kind of like the determinant of the, of the automorphism of the fiber you'd get, like that's, that's these signs that I'm writing down. Okay, and it turns out that you just have to, okay, so remember we're doing things virtually. So virtually, if I'm looking at the virtual, uh, sorry, we're doing things virtually and up to homotopy. So up to homotopy, if I want an automorphism of this representation, I need to give you two signs. One for like, one for the sign bits of this representation and one for the fixed bits, okay? And up, homo up to homotopy, you're gonna get, so, 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 so you're gonna get, uh, you're, 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 yeah, you're going to get two signs. Sorry. What I mean is that the, let me, I'll write it over here. What I mean is that O of R P comma Q is isomorphic to O of P minus Q. So I think I like to do O of Q first. O of Q times O of P minus Q. Okay. So now up to homotopy, that's pi naught of this group, which is Z mod two times Z mod two. Okay. So now if you tell me two of these signs, then I can tell you the rest, okay? So all of the other signs that I'm picking up as my maps of representation, they're determined by the relations of the category over here. So, and this is the diagram that I get, okay? So then I have these five numbers to pick. I have to pick the total dimension of the bundle, the weight on the B0 fix, fixed point, the weight on the Q1 fixed points, and these two bits of the, of the morphisms and then the rest has to be completely determined. I didn't mention these because up to isomorphism, you can swap them, it doesn't matter, okay? Okay, great. So now let's talk about the degree of a bundle. So suppose that you have a G bundle over B, then this defines a representation um, and uh, we're gonna call that representation just the absolute value of C. And the way you do this is by pulling back along stuff, okay? So points in the category pi B are just maps like this. So you can just pull back the bundle, you get a bundle over the orbit, you use path lifting and the fact that it's well-defined up to homotopy, and then you get that, 
you know, you, you can, you have, can assign a representation to uh, the bundle, okay? And the way you think about it is if you have a G bundle over each of the orbits, you have some fibers, right? Those are, these are G representations. And then if you have a path, you lift it, you get a map of representation, and then you take the determinant of that map. And then that's like, that's what you get, okay? Okay, so now let's go back to our example, okay? So this space P now, I wanna describe it in a little bit different way. Okay, so um, yeah, Prasiv taught me this a few weeks back and it really, really helped that, helped out. Um, so um, so you look at, uh, well, okay, so clearly like P is, so, so when you're building the RP infinity, right, you take the sphere and R infinity and then you mod out by the antipodal action. Okay, and you can think of that as taking, now instead you're gonna take the sphere, so the unit vector is in this representation, but now it's not just a representation of C2. I take my infinite, my, I take my, my complete universe and I tensor with a sign representation for another Z mod two. So I'm gonna write it as sigma two for the symmetric group on two letters, okay? And now I'm acting by the sign there, so that takes any vector in here and, and multiplies it by the minus, so then I'm just killing that action. Okay. So, and now when I think of this like this, then I can write down, like I can just produce vector bundles uh, by writing something like this. So, um, so first I take this space, I times with uh, the tensor product of representation, one for C2 and one for sigma two, and then I balance out the sigma two action, the sigma two action. Okay. Okay, so then you, um, so you can produce a bunch of line bundles this way. So here I'm telling you what to pick as this representation. And so gamma one zero, that actually is our bundle gamma. Okay. Um, and it's, you, you know, you can write it like this. And then um, by taking uh, a trivial representation for C2 and a sign representation for sigma two. And then you can list a bunch of bundles this way. Okay. And write down their degrees. But okay, so you have four line bundles and uh, somehow like there's five gadgets. And I mean, I'm not gonna say this is ranked, this is not free, so it's a little trickier, but there's like five bits that you need to specify for RO pi P. So these line bundles don't catch everything that's in this, uh, the representations of pi P, okay? Um, but they catch a lot. Um, so I'm gonna take, so they catch a lot. So I'm just gonna focus on them, okay? So I'm gonna do RO zero pi P. I'm gonna take it to be the subgroup of RO pi P generated by the degree of these line bundles. Okay, so now this is gonna, like now you work it out. This is gonna be a Z mod three cross Z mod two. So you're gonna, you're gonna lose one of these Z mod twos, okay? And now I'm going to regrade, okay? Because this five number grading, it's confusing when you're trying to compare with ROC2 grading. I'd like some grading that like I could just read off the ROG grading from just like at, without any effort, okay? So you do this trick where you take, the first is the number of trivial representation. Q is the number of, vert of sign representation, but virtually you do one sign minus one trivial, okay? To get rid of the extra counting for the dimension. And then N, you do the same thing with our tautological line bundle. And then epsilon, okay, so it's this weird like grading. You don't have to worry about it. You just like, you have a formula and then you get these four integers. Well, three integers and one, Z, one element of Z mod two. Okay. Now, I think that this is the image of what you get if you look at vector bundles, virtual bundles over P and you map to, you look at their dimensions. Um, so uh, I don't have a complete proof, but I have a, a lot of, like I, I've convinced myself this has to be true. Um, so I've been digging into like the old literature of Dwyer, Zabrotsky and all. I don't know, it's hard to find the right things in the literature. So I think, I feel like I'm there. I might be wrong, but I feel like this is the image. So that this extra other thing, it's not like super interesting that I'm leaving out, okay? And now I'm gonna actually make another comment about the fact to justify restricting to this grading. Um, so my comment is gonna be that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scroll back for a second. So if I look at these integers, if Q0 is equal to Q1, then C is homogeneous as a vector bundle. So it has a tom. Isomorphism. Okay. 
So now the thing, the digit I'm missing from these things, I'm missing zero, 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 one. Okay, so this is the digit I'm missing and these two would be equal. So I would have a Tom isomorphism and we'll see you later. So when you have a Tom isomorphism, what happens is in this, like if you have an RO degraded Tom isomorphism, what happened in, in this like extended grading is you just get isomorphic page. So I could always, if I have a bundle that represent this, I could set it, I could set the, the extra grading. I could just make it one, I could just kill it and I wouldn't get new information. Okay, so that's going to be my justification to myself to get rid of it for now. Okay, but in any case, this is a subgroup, so I can look at the sub gadget generated by it. And now here's our theorem. Um, so I have to put the pre here. So like, um, I'm like 99% sure this is right, but we're still checking stuff. Okay, so but so this is uh, this is pretty fresh. So I'm gonna do pre, but. Um, yeah, I would be flabbergasted if this did not, if we found a mistake, okay? So if I look at this bit of the grading, then I get a four-graded cohomology theory where the last digit is really a Zima two grading. And what I get is something that's free over M2 with a bunch of generators like so. Okay, they have degrees. I'm gonna show you a picture of how I think about this. And then you have relations and whatnot. But the thing that I find super cool about this grading is that if you put these two together, you get that tau is decomposable. Which is kind of nuts, okay? So now here, sorry, rho and tau are in M2, okay? They're in the cohomology of the point. Okay, so now recall that if I looked at uh, the ROC2 graded cohomology of P, now this equivalent, because I made my grading one, I, I switch my grading a little bit. This is the same as putting zeros over here. Then I had this algebra. And now X actually is tau one times W zero and Y is W zero times W one. And this was Christie's Tom class. So, and the decomposability of that element, I think is what caused the, caused the failure of the Tom isomorphism in this case. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you a picture. Here's how I think of it. Okay, so here's how I visualize this. So the first thing is E squared is one. So that's a unit. So it just like copies everything over. So I'm just gonna kill it. I'm gonna make it one and I'm gonna draw a picture without E, okay? Um, so now, now that I get a tri-grading, so I have N, Q and P as my, are my axis, okay? And the colors, because it's so hard to draw something in three dimension without getting confused, the colors, if you can see them, are meant to denote like which, how deep you are in the end grading, okay? And okay, so first we see the cohomology of P, the ROG graded is just in this PQ page and it's just this algebra here. This is a picture, oh yeah, a dot means a, fr a free M2 sum n, okay? So everything is really like a double cone here, okay? So so it's more complicated, but I'm not gonna draw that. So this picture here, this is the picture that, you know, if you know Sarah Peterson, uh, she's given you a sticker for it probably at some point in your life, okay? So this is the cohomology of it. This is like a KZ2, uh, a neck over in KZ2 thing, okay? So now you have this thing. And now in degree N is equal to one, um, you have again, this copy. And this is the fact that the Tom space of gamma, this is like the, this is the grading that sees the cohomology of the Tom space and those are isomorphic. Okay. But then in, in higher degrees, you get more things that are more complicated. And I gave a proof sketch over here of how one might uh, do this. Um, it's okay. So now I have some details in this proof sketch and I'm running out of time and I don't want to, I want to have time for my last slide. But the key is that you have a Tom isomorphism in this theory. So you can shift everything around so that to compute the weird degrees, all you need to do is to compute the, the ROG graded cohomology of Tom spaces. So you can like reduce in any degree, you can find a bundle here where you can translate the, the computation you need to do in RO pi P graded cohomology to a computation in ROC2 cohomology. Okay, and then you have, okay, so how do you do that? Well, you need to know the cohomology of various Tom spaces, but you know, there's this ATS theorem on stunted projective spaces, like how they're the Tom spaces of, of, of multiples of the tautological line bundle. Well, the proof carries through equivalently. This is something that Preston pointed out to me. So you can really literally write cell models for this and you can compute the cohomology. 
So I'll show you very quickly. So this is, for example, the cohomology of this time space. So um, I guess the trick is you start in three, three, you put four of them, and then you do, do this. So if you had n, you would start in degree n, n, you would put n plus one, m2s, and then you'd start the normal pattern. And now I just want to finish, sorry, I'm a bit over time, but I want to finish with showing you this picture. So this is a computation that appeared on the archive in 2018 by Constantinople. Um, and uh, now this is for the space BC2U1. So this is now the classifying space for complex line bundles. Um, and uh, in this paper, it's proved that, he proves that um, R pi B is Z cube. So again, you get a trigraded theory and there's an isomorphism like so. I didn't give you the degree of the classes um, in this case, but um, I want you to compare with this answer. Um, it's very similar. Um, I knew this, like we, we, we read this before we came up with this answer. So it's definitely inspired. And uh, so the things we're still checking is some of the relations here. Like I, I think we know how to, we know we know what to do, but we're not quite done. Um, and just you know, verifying that we have that really everything all checks out. But um, this is these are like very appealing, least similar answers. Um, and uh, that's it. Thank you.